What's going on everyone? Sneaky Mofo here, back with a new Cheat Engine tutorial for you. Today I'm going to be talking about the XMM registers. I've received a few questions about this from people within the past week or two, and uh, many more questions in the past, so I figured I would talk about it real quick. Uh, here soon I'll be talking about registers in general as well as opcodes and instructions. Um, you know. So, anyway, before I dive into all that stuff, I just wanted to talk about this as sort of like a primer to that, which is sort of like backwards from how you would typically learn about this stuff, but that's okay. All right, so basically what I've done is I've gone into Metal Gear Solid here and I've found the address that has our health stored in it. And now what I'm going to do is find what writes to the address. Okay. See the one instruction counting up? All right, this one that just keeps counting up like crazy. That has to do with uh, the GUI, you know, the value on the screen. So just because I've dug into it and I understand that. So we see two values popping up here. Um, and this one has to do with every time we're getting shot, our health is being moved from XMM2 into R14. Uh, well, not R14, but the memory address that's in R14, which is this. So how can we determine all that? How do we know this? All right. So the first thing to note is that when there's brackets around a register, that means that it's a pointer this is pointing to a memory address. That's what it is. That's what a pointer basically is in this context. This is pointing to a memory address, this address. All right, so this isn't moving something from XMM2 into R14 specifically. It's moving something from XMM2 into the memory address that's being pointed to from R14. So if we looked in the R14 register right now, how could we peek in that? Just go down here. So we've selected our instruction. Let's go to R14. What's in R14? This, which is our memory address. Okay. And so that bracket says to put the value inside of this. So, all right, that's that. Now, XMM2. What in the world is that? You've probably tried to write a script with something related to this and you crash your game or it just doesn't work. What you're trying to get working doesn't work. Um, click more information. And this is the first thing I recommend. We want to see what's in other registers, other XMM registers at the time that this instruction uh, was discovered as writing to our address. So once you click more information you get this window here and then over here you have these two two little buttons that you could pretty much miss <laughs> easily this has to do with the stack you don't want to necessarily worry about the stack right right now although you can find some pretty telling stuff through here digging around anyway we're not going to worry about that right now we're going to click on this the F all right this will show us our FPU registers and our XMM registers. Cool. So now we see that at the time um, that this was found, all right, what was in XMM2 is this value. And then, uh, you know, let's look around in other registers and what do we see? Well, we see the same value in XMM3. So these two values are the same. We know that he, at this point, XMM2 was our current health, which that's not what it is right now, so why is it here? Well, it's because at the 24th time that this was registered, right, our health happened to be down to that. But the first time that this was registered, that this instruction showed as writing to the address, this just happened to be in... XMM2. So if we want to like refresh that value, we can close this. We can click stop and close. And then we can say find what writes to this address. 
And then let's escape out and get hit some more. There, we got shot. So here's this instruction. Let's go uh, more information. Click F. Okay. And then, let's see. Actually, that's the wrong one. Wow, that's a totally different thing there. Why did it do that? That's crazy. Stop close. Oh, it's because I did the wrong one. I did the four byte one. We want the float one. This is the actual one. What writes to this address? Escape. There, we got hit. Okay, and this is our one here. Once again, more information. F. And here we go. That looks better. That looks closer to what we actually have, you know. But this remains the same. So if we had found our health and we let ourselves get to max health, we would see that this is our max health value. So for a cheat we wanted to write, instead of XMM2 writing to here, we could just say XMM3 write to here. Pretty simple, right? So whenever you bring up your disassembler and you see this kind of stuff, don't let it intimidate you. Just understand that these are their own registers, XMM registers, which I will show you right now. All right, this is from Intel, Introduction to X64 Assembly. We're going to zoom in here. These are the XMM registers. Okay, white denotes legacy X86 registers, dark gray, new X64 registers. So 32 bit processors, you know at a certain point, not when they were first created, but at some point they ended up getting their own XMM registers. With 64-bit there were this many more added. Right? With 64-bit these registers are unique to it. With 32-bit these represent the portion of the 64-bit registers that were 32-bit. So this whole box is RAX. Half of that is EAX. If you took half of that, it would be AX. And then if you split AX into two, you would have AH and AL for high and low. And we'll click on this to show you kind of what that looks like. So uh, I wasn't going to necessarily dig into this, but I'll go ahead and do it um, since I'm going down that path. Okay, you can think of this as, imagine RAX is a uh, tractor trailer, a big truck, you know, transporting a lot of stuff. Okay, EAX is like a pickup truck, a heavy duty pickup truck, EAX. AX is like a four door sedan, okay. And AH and AL are two like smart cars <laughs> or something, um, each being the same or capable of holding the same amount of stuff. So, what do registers do? They hold information, they hold values, numbers, data. That's what they do, okay? Memory, like RAM, that's meant for more long term storage. Registers are meant for short-term storage, used for calculations and pointing to different places in RAM to actually store stuff. So all this stuff resides in a processor. This is a processor. This is the inside of a processor. You know, so somewhere on here, physically, like let's say it's this section here, physically represents everything you see here. This is a physical location in the CPU. It's a thing that wires and all kinds of stuff are happening. Which, by the way, you, ha you have to watch this video, how a CPU works. I'll have all this stuff linked in the description. This will explain it amazingly well. And you'll understand how to think of this stuff in terms of where it's working physically on the CPU. But anyway, so... Um, when you're dealing with these registers, you can't write, you can't say, like, move XMM0 to, into RAX. Okay, you can't say, here, let's go ahead and bring this up. Table extras. Okay, right? 
So you can say this, you can say this, but you couldn't say like this, move R, move SS, which is like a move instruction for floating point stuff, into RAX. Why? Because XMM0, or one of the XMM registers, is like a tractor trailer. Okay. An RAX would be like a heavy duty pickup truck. You know, imagine you've got a tractor trailer full of stuff, boxes, you know, stuff, just full. Imagine trying to put all that into a heavy duty pickup truck. It physically won't fit into the truck. You can't move it there because it won't fit. Feasibly, there could be an amount of data here in XMM0 that would fit into RAX, but principally, assuming this was filled up, you couldn't fit all that into, into this, right? So if you're going to be moving information from one of these into another location, um, you know, floating point registers and these, they you'll see them being moved either between each other or to memory addresses by way of uh, a pointer which you would need to dereference and all that dereferencing means is that you take something like this R14 and you see what that equals so dereferencing R14 in this case to dereference R14 we go look at R14 and we see what's in it it's that. This is the dereferenced value of R14, seeing what's in R14. So this is a pointer being dereferenced. Okay, so you see all this stuff related to XMM. They're moving in between each other, or it's going from an XMM to a register that has brackets around it, meaning it's moving to uh, an address in RAM. Okay, so that's kind of how you have to if you're going to be playing with XMM registers, you can only move data between XMM registers or to, uh, you know, an address, a memory address, which is referenced like that, or you could have it move directly to a memory address that you specify. So, anyway. Uh, now you need to understand that you know, opcodes and instructions are, there are specific ones for things. So if you say move SS XMM3 to here, if you try to do this, you know, this instruction is valid. If you try to do move SS float 7000 to here, it's, it's going to crash your game or throw an error or something because it doesn't know, it's expecting you to be referencing an XMM register on this side to do something with. It needs a floating point register. It's kind of like you pretend this is you telling someone go get me a bag of chips from the cabinet over there. Right? So go get me the bag of chips from the cabinet and this is the cabinet. Right? Well, imagine if you say, go get me the bag of chips from the cabinet, and then, some, you know, this is dog. You know, you didn't say, go get me the bag of chips from the dog, right? So this instruction is looking here, and it would say, wait a minute, that's not a cabinet, or that's not what I'm expecting to be there, and then it's just not going to know what to do. So that's, you know, if you wanted to put a floating point value yourself into here, then you could just move, do a regular move, a float value into this location. And that's how you could do that. Okay? So, that's that. Alright, so now back to us wanting to do our cheat. Let's bring this back up. And we go click on F here for float. Alright, so we see that in XMM3, this is our max health. XMM2 has our current health. So for our cheat, you know, we just show disassembler. We've got it right here. Um, 
we could look up through here and see like how values are being moved into each register you know and try to find values that way or just get an idea from what we've done here with these but now this is the instruction we'll say tools auto assemble template AOB injection we'll call this AOB health and then right here we already saw that you know we can make our cheat this simple we just move max health into that memory address or we could say move into R14 float uh, 7000 you could do that so the first thing that we'll do is comment that one out we'll go file assign to current cheat table close this we'll go ahead and close these stop and close all right now see what our health is we're getting close to dying so if I go ahead and enable this script as soon as we get hit again it should put our health up to max health and there it is sit down bitch okay so anyway um, so now we'll disable that go back in the game get shot watch our health decrease cool now go back in our script we'll comment out this line and then we'll let this one do the work here we say okay enable it now we should see this go up to 7000 there we go so this is basically how you handle data with uh, these XMM registers. You have to be very cognizant of how you're moving data from them or between them. And that's pretty much it, you know. So, um, anyway, that's, that's pretty much all I want to dive into at the moment. I will leave, uh, and by the way, don't judge me for using this IE Edge. It was just a browser that I don't have a thousand tabs open in. <laughs> um, but yes, check out this how a CPU works video it's it's done extremely well um, and I'll throw these other links down if you're interested uh, there are conventions that are used for registers so if you were to let's say create your own program in assembly you were to write it in assembly you could use these registers for uh, things that they were intended to be used for back in the day so if you are familiar with programming at all, let's say you wanted to do a loop, typically like let's say you programmed uh, or you created a program in C++, if you had a loop then whenever you compiled your program um, the uh, the compiler would make it such that for that loop ECX would probably be the register that it stores the value in for the loop. So it's counting your loop with ECX. So if you're doing like disassembly and you see ECX with a certain number in it, um, you know, knowing these conventions can give you clues as to how maybe a register is being used. So that might give you an idea of how a function works or something of that nature. So anyway, uh, I'll leave this as well for those of you who are interested in getting this far into it. but. Generally, you know, these are called general purpose registers. These ones here, you can use them essentially for anything that you want. But if you're just disassembling a program that was compiled with something like Visual Studio or whatever, then you'll probably see some of these registers being used per these kind of conventions. And that can give you clues to stuff. So. Anyway, in the next video, I will delve more into registers, and I will also get into uh, more into instructions specifically, you know, move, jump, XOR, stuff like that, and uh, take you down, down that trip. So anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've got some questions. I'll try to help. And uh, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Check out my other Cheat Engine videos, and I'll just see you guys in the next one. All right, take care.